In this video, I'm going to talk about production theory, a typical topic in economics. Eventually, we're going to get to a graphs that look like this using the chart above as well. It turns out quantity produces a function of labor and capital. By capital, we mean equipment. By labor, we mean people. And we often write it like this, that quantity is a function of labor and capital. We use K for capital. I need to introduce a couple formulas. One is average product, and that's equal to total product divided by total labor, or labor. Next we have marginal product, and that's equal to change in total product divided by change in labor, which is how much one more worker can produce. It's often written as delta total product, which means change in total product, divided by change in labor. And that equals to total product divided by 1 in this example here, and I'll discuss that more. One last point of interest is the marginal product is the slope of the average product line. So when we plot quantity produced on the y-axis and labor along the x-axis, the total product curve looks something like that average product like that, and marginal product like that. The area to the left of that line, the blue area, a little bit lighter, maybe that's a little too much, that's where each additional worker is adding more than the previous worker. So the slope of that line is the marginal product as well. Now in between this two areas, adding more labor, adding more workers adds to total product but they're adding less than the previous worker did. And we'll look at the table in a second. Anything to the right of the green dot, additional labor actually subtracts from total product. Now I'm going to make a table. The first three columns are given. In this case, 3, 0, 0. Average product is nothing, and marginal product is nothing. Capital is fixed at 3, labor is at 1, total product is 5. So average product of labor is 5 divided by 1, which is equal to 5. Marginal product of labor is 5 minus 0 divided by 1, which is 5. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the next example. Again, amount of capital is 3. Labor is 2. Total product is 18. Average product is 18 divided by 2, which is 9. Marginal product of labor is 18 minus 5, if we can move it over there, there it is, divided by 2, come on, 2, there it is, minus 1. And that, of course, if you did the math, it would equal to 13. Now I'm going to populate the rest of the table quickly, and you can actually pause it and do the math yourself if you want to. There we go, and let's add 5 and then also negative 4. There we go. Now that would be the graphs. So the graphs equate to these numbers here. Anyway, moving right along kind of slowly. Average, again, marginal product is total product divided by labor. I want to talk about this a little more. In this case, 3. And we have the 48 to 45. The difference in, in uh, labor is 1. In fact, the difference in labor in this case is always 1. So I can just divide whatever the numbers, the two numbers are of total product, like between 40 and 30. In that case, it's just 40 minus 30 and 10 because I'm actually dividing by 1, if that makes sense to you. Well, that's about it for a little bit of introduction to production theory, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.